Welcome back to the show. Okay, one thing is certain, nobody wants to think about their death or the death of their loved ones. But our next guest says that there is a growing movement towards a more transparent and even positive approach about what will happen when we die. Here to tell us more is death doula, Adriana Prosser. Welcome to the show, Adriana. Thank you so much. I think we should start off because I don't know if all of us have heard of mm -hmm. a death doula. So what exactly is it? Death doula, soul companion, end of life uh, doula, they are people who walk with people through their journey of death. So before, during, after, we're an extra set of hands and a warm heart. Oh my gosh, so nicely said. That is really, really beautiful. Yeah. Um, what are some of the responsibilities uh, that a death doula takes on? We are non-medical care, so I'm not giving medicine, but I am there basically as your professional big sister. Oh. I'm there to advocate for you. I'm there to help you through what you're going through, make a cup of tea and have a good <coughs> cry. Or perhaps I am doing the dishes for you because you're too tired from your medication. The scope is very large. How did you get into this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sad story. Oh. Uh, it starts with the death of my brother in 2010, and his death was a suicide loss, so it shattered my world. Mm -hmm. And it opened me up to sharing my story of grief. And when I shared my story of grief, other people gave me their story. And I became a safe space for talking about death, dying, and grief. So much so that years later, my friend from work calls me up and says, what are you doing? And I'm like, mm, life? And she's like, yeah, about that. I'm facing death and we're going to Disneyland. Wow! <laughs> so she had uh, stage four breast cancer and uh, she had finished chemo and she didn't want to sit around and wait for death. So she asked me to companion her to Disneyland and South Korea. And I was just so honored to be there for her uh, that when I came back and I talked to my therapist, everyone needs one of those. Mm -hmm. uh, she was like, have you heard of the term death doula? And I was like, no. And she's like, I think you are one. And wow. sure enough, yeah, I've been doing it for a decade. Unbelievable story. Absolutely incredible. So, I mean, Disneyland, South Korea, that's amazing. But what are some of the more, even more interesting requests that you've received? Well, I've had a couple clients that, because they're so close to the end of life, that it's very difficult for them to be mobile. One of them had a bucket list wish to see the stars one last time. Oh and to just try Man. to get them out of their bed to go and see them with the light pollution in Toronto, that was a bit of a challenge. Um, another one, I hand wrote the notes of them dictating to me special things that they wanted to say for weddings and birthdays that they weren't going to see for their grandchildren. Um, it's very interesting. I get a lot of one-off phone call support for people who are weirded out by seeing their dead loved ones in their dreams, and it's completely natural. Wow. So a lot of uh, validation and support through mm. very different stages of death. Oh my God, I'm so impressed by what you do. Mm -hmm. uh, listen, dying can be very expensive. Mm -hmm. The average funeral uh, bill is between $5,000 and $10,000. A plot in some of Canada's biggest cities alone can cost tens of thousands of dollars. And most people, I suspect, are making these kinds of decisions decisions with grief, mm. under duress, is, is that accurate? When my friend, uh, she was going through her father's death, she said it was like planning a wedding in seven days with the weight of an elephant of grief on her. <gasps> so it can be very difficult, and that's why I think the death positivity movement is not so much about yay death, it's about having those conversations of transparency and authenticity so that we can have the death and the funeral that we want that aligns with our values and maybe our wallet too. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you know, the. the the funeral industry, though, even given those statistics, it is slowly changing, and there are more and more options than ever before to make it maybe a little bit cheaper, easier, personalized, et cetera. What are some of the new, I guess, innovations? Totally. The industry is listening. So we are getting more green burial options. So wicker and woven caskets instead of those big, I hard oak ones. Yeah. If you still like that image, though, you can rent the casket. Um, you might have heard of cremation, but you might not have heard of of aquamation, which uses water. Yeah. Sorry, what? Whoa. What do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> that you use water and a whole bunch of science that I'm not going to get into instead of a fire for your cremains. And then don't forget about your cremains. There are so many different options these days. Instead of just an urn, you can be pressed into a diamond, into a coral reef. Can you my personal anywhere? favorite, yeah. I'm going to be pressed into a vinyl record so that my family can listen that to me. That is so beautiful. My that is God. So beautiful. There's so many options out there.
Oh my gosh. I am floored. I am floored. <laughs> great. It has changed. You're absolutely right. Wow. Listen, what are some of the, the most important things that you encourage everyone to consider as they, not just as they near their end of their lives, but for us now? I think exactly this. We start to talk, talk. and plan so that we can get all of the logistics out of the way so that when our loved one is dying, we can be present with them and not worry about all of those logistics. So there is a fantastic free resource from the government of Canada. It's called the Advanced Care Planning Kit. They will mail it to you or you can do it online. And if that seems a little too formal, there's a board game called the Death Deck. And it's a prompt of talking about different wishes and oh. legacies to help you have those conversations with to your family. open it up. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Is this our new games night? Yeah. <laughs> do it. <laughs> I'm serious. Maybe. Unreal. Okay, so finally, uh, you know someone who is grieving mm -hmm. um, the death of a loved one or family member. How can we best help them? Great question. I think the thing that we all get hung up on and we need to let go is saying the right thing. There is no such thing. It's about meeting them where they're at. That is a, uh, a piece that came from my training. And meeting someone where they're at is leaving yourself out of that equation and looking at them and seeing what they need. Do they need a really good cry? Do they need you to listen? Because nine times out of 10, it is. Listening is such a gift and such a skill. And as well, grief can be really isolating. And so making sure that they know that they have that community and that support and you bring that village to them. Bring a comforting movie. Uh, build them a blanket fort. Let them be ugly. Let them have that yeah. space to metabolize their feels. Let them wail and cry and process that grief. And as well, storytelling really helped with me. Having that story of telling how their loved one passed and just how they can't fathom living without them really helps our brain process that new world that we're living in without our loved one. Adriana, I don't know if you all Th feel this, this, but I just feel so much more at ease. This is one of the best things I think we've ever done. Yeah. Wonderful. Unbelievable. Um, You're a remarkable human being. You really are. Yeah. You really, really are. Yeah. So, um, thank you so much for sharing your expertise thank you. and thank you for doing what you do. I think you've probably helped countless people thank you. in your works. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Hey there, what did you think? Drop your comments below and join the conversation. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you can find more on everything from food and fashion to pop culture and current events. See you soon.